Tell me about your experience at Buncombe last night. Um, Buncombe was a very interesting um, place last night. Um, when on our way there, we had, were sharing stories in the uh, the car, all of us just having a good time. And uh, we weren't sure if we were going to get the same amount of activity or if uh, there was going to be something else going on. We were kind of hoping something else was going to go on, but we didn't know to exactly what extent. So when we got there, um, we took a few photographs um, and a few stills. And of course, we'll have the evidence soon too. But um, our newest investigator had been wondering if uh, he was ever going to get touched or what was going to happen with him. And so um, he got that and much more. So it was good that he got to see some of the stuff that I've been used to for 20 years. Did anything years. happen to you personally? Uh, me personally, I got, uh, it felt like an attachment or something right in the, the muscles just below the rib cage. Um, it kept knocking the wind out of me. Um, not like a punch or anything like that, but just a, a fatigue, an energy drain. Um, and I definitely had to sit down a few times because it, it really affected me pretty good, which it didn't do that on the last one. Um, there was no um, odd impressions on the last time. This time, the energy felt totally different. Um, and it really ramped up uh, about 45 minutes into the investigation. We were thinking, well, maybe it's not going to be as active this time. But uh, about 45 minutes in, man, it, it just lit up. So that was a good thing. And you thought you saw something like a place memory? Can you tell everybody about that on the hill? Yeah, on the hill there was... Um, by the way, the noise is uh, our little guy playing down here. So if you see me looking down, that's what it is. Um, as you're standing in front of the general store and looking toward the hill that's directly opposite of the store, um, in my mind's eye I saw about 12, 12 to 18, 20 individuals standing in a line looking at us. Um, Troy, who has the gift of discernment, he was, um, had also said, you know, there were people watching. Um, the older lady uh, over at the mill, and uh, he said she, he saw her in period dress, and she had the long dress, kind of like from the Edwardian period, um, and coming around the mill from the side of the crossroad area to around the back and then I know you and Amanda and James also saw movement on the opposite side where the the woman would have been walking when Troy said that uh, he was seeing her but he, he had told, uh, told, told me that um, the lady had said there have been so many of them we don't know who to trust and so it was Troy's impression that was meaning like a paranormal investigation or a, just a regular investigation or whatnot. And um, if, if, big if, it was a human haunt, um, they didn't know who to trust. But of course, if they were anything other than human, they were very wise to distrust. So, um, that was an interesting piece there. Okay, what about Rock Point Cemetery in Gold Hill? Yeah, Rock Point Cemetery in Gold Hill, we, we've all, we called it last week Gold Hill Cemetery, but apparently it's Rock Point Cemetery. Um, and that was, that wasn't so uh, impressive to me this time. Uh, for about the first 30 to 40 minutes, I mean, there wasn't, any activity, the atmosphere was just relaxing and um, 
you know, we were finishing our lunch there at the the truck, and um, not too bad. So um, once the it got later into the twilight, and as night came upon the over the graveyard, that's when the feeling seemed to change a bit. Um, that's about the time James and Troy began seeing things in the thicket. Um, I can't say I saw any, anything in the thicket, um, but I trust both of them. So I think uh, that it, it's interesting. Um, I definitely heard some things in the thicket, like rustling and some footsteps, but I didn't see anything. Whereas Troy saw both lights and uh, shadow people, uh, and James saw reflective eyes peek over basically just a, a little post about yay round and maybe four feet high four and a half feet that was an old barbed wire fence post and um, the eyes popped up and then popped down and uh, so I didn't, didn't see that. a lot of the stuff they saw but it was still interesting um, at one point I thought I heard uh, footsteps on the gravel uh, I can't say for sure that it was because the wind was picking up. It may have been branches, it may have been um, most anything. So I can't honestly say I felt anything. Um, and I know Troy had some extra experiences that really affected him emotionally. Um, he got uh, impressions of, of what had happened in the past with a couple different individuals and it it affected him, made him sad, and uh, I get that. Uh, a lot of the place memories I get sometimes are, are interesting, um, but I try to detach myself emotionally from it so that I can view it more as a movie instead of getting involved in it personally. So uh, that's really the, the trick that I've learned over the years with my own gifts to kind of work through. Um, but other than that, successful investigation. Um, everyone had some sort of experience. Um, we're going to be doing the evidence review soon, so we're going to be looking at the audio, the visual, uh, still photos, full spectrum, um, regular HD camera uh, video that you're watching it on from this one that's recording. Um, so we'll, we'll see what comes out out the wash. One last thing, and, talk um, about real quickly, residually, what happened with Amanda's car as she was leaving last night oh, after we all came back. Um, when we all came back, usually, and I did this time, uh, prayed that no attachments follow us, um, no one gets attached, but one of our investigators, Amanda, her car, before she left, her uh, dome light, uh, even with everything closed, so I took my was just going like holy water, which kind of funny because I use heavy duty holy water spritzers, so it, it's kind of goofy. But I figure you can use a, a the regular one, or you could use a big one, or you could probably use a bucket with a, a big uh, sweeper, and like some of the other uh, jurisdictions do. So. Um, but for me, I took the, the spritzer out and rebuked and bound anything that would be in the car. Um, as soon as I did, it went right back to normal. So there was some sort of attachment either on the car, most, pro most likely on the car. Because um, I prayed no attachments would follow each individual. Uh, I guess next time I have to stipulate what... Um, can attach when and where and to what extent. So, um, yeah, that's about it. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>